Hello, and welcome to ScreenWorks. I'm Jerry Arte, curator of the digital program at the Photographers Gallery in London, together with Marco De Mutis, a digital curator at Photo Museum Winter Tour in Switzerland. We launched ScreenWorks three years ago uh, to jointly explore the changing role of the network image in the post digital era. ScreenWorks is a fortnightly series of live stream uh, conversations and guided tours led by artists, researchers, and experts in various fields related to digital media, such as video games, social media, and digital art. We invite and encourage our guests to explore the possibilities of the live stream format, and therefore, each event takes a different format. It can be a guided exploration of a corner of the internet, a participatory or an interactive action, an invitation to learn about the work process of a given artist, or a performance stream of digital materials put together for the occasion by our guest. We have hosted 60 events. This is our 60th event, in fact, uh, over these years. And we invite you to explore them on our website, skimwars.com, or on our YouTube and Twitch channels. Please remember that if you have found Skimworks useful for your professional or personal interests, do consider subscribing to folders. For seven euros, around six pounds per month, you will support the program and its artists and also get uh, your personalized folder on folders.skinworks.com. There you will receive files and extra content from the artists and researchers of Skinworks. And now some housekeeping information. Your microphone should be muted to avoid noise disturbances. If it is still on, please mute it. And uh, we are recording and we will be archiving and publishing this event. So please uh, use the public chat to ask questions. Uh, or feel free to send them uh, through a message to me or to Marco. And welcome from my side too. I am Marco De Mutis, digital curator at Photo Museum Winterthur in Switzerland. Today, we are going to explore some of the recent imaging systems that have sprung up through diffusion models and machine learning technologies. From DALI to Midjourney, from stable diffusion to Crayon, algorithmic image creation has been popularized by platforms and services under the general label of AI. Narratives surrounding this technology have been ones of magic, of autonomous machines improving flow efficiency, replacing human creativity even, and conjuring images out of thin air, out of simple text prompts. And yet, as we are reminded by Kate Crawford, um, AI is neither artificial nor intelligent. It is made from natural resources and it is people who are performing the tasks to make the systems appear autonomous. Similarly, Nicolas Malvé has investigated the millions of images used to train algorithmic systems and pointed out that data sets are built on an array of practices of mediation of photography, collecting, labeling, composing, assembling images and distributing them. All of these relations are usually rendered invisible by AI imaging platforms and the narratives in which they present themselves as high-tech automated systems. However, the necessary human participation in the development of these models becomes visible when certain aspects of the world are omitted. The age, gender, social background, or ethnic origin of the people working on the production of these systems condition their representational capability. Today, we enter algorithmic forms of image creation through a very common human role that is regularly neglected or misrepresented in the recent surge of AI image making, the figure of the mother and the social relationships that this figure can enact. Guided by computational mama, we will be taken through prompts for diffusion models and machine learning algorithms in which the artist reproduces as many possible ideas around mothering, motherhood, and birthing as the AI model can imagine. Through this process, Computational Mama reconfigures the technological discourse around imaging systems, around social relations of care and chosen families. Computational Mama's work explores live coding and teaching as a form of camaraderie, friendship, and self-care. On her Twitch stream, she teaches the basics of creative computation and new approaches to computational thinking. Her streaming series, Coding with Friends, is rooted in creating inclusive spaces for women makers to explore creative computation. She was awarded the Processing Foundation Fellowship in 2021 to produce season two of Coding with Friends. She was a 2021 Processing Fellow, a speaker at Iteration 2021, a 2020 Be Fantastic Fellow, and has been featured in Casey Ries' recent list of generative artists doing interesting work. 
Her work has been featured in India Art Fair and Porspiel Transmedial and CTM 2021. She's a co-instigator of Draft, which explores emergent ideas of text and its future. The Monica Computational Mama was created in late 2017 when a bedridden, heavily pregnant mama-to-be decided to learn creative coding. She currently lives in Udaipur in India, in a multi-generational household of all women and her five-year-old son. She's also known as Ambika, a museum professional with over 10 years of experience, and is the co-founder of Ajabkar Cultural Services. Dear Computational Mama, thanks so much for being with us today. The screen is yours. Thanks, John. Thanks, Marco. It's uh, really exciting to be here and uh, also a bit scary because I'm usually very good with making very crisp presentations. <laughs> and this was quite a challenge that you threw to me that uh, there could be no slides. However, there are one or two places where I will use slides because as good I am as, at making presentations, I'm very bad at keeping my documentation in place. So the pictures are only on those slides. So do bear with me on that. Um, so uh, uh, they've already spoken a bit about uh, what have been uh, what and where I've been up to, but I'll just set a bit of context for everyone. Uh, and I think it's really important for me to share that because it's really that context that makes the work and uh, responds to uh, responds to the things that are around me. Uh, usually, yeah, some days my my screen looks like this. I have various kind of code stuff open on it, but. Uh, the truth is that I am not an engineer or have been trained in coding in any way. I just learned it very much as, I, as uh, the intro mentions while I was expecting. Uh, and it was a very, very different thing from what I was doing. I was building museums. Um, uh, this is like a very big one, like almost like a monolithic thing uh, in the north of uh, India and on the history of the Sikhs. Uh, and this is where my journey really started. But what is so interesting uh, about museums is that they really take their time to get built because there are so many stakeholders. And of course, it's physical structures. Of course, they take time. Whereas code is so fast, like you do something here and you get the result right there. And that was really something that I needed at that point in my life where I was uh, looking after a child, uh, you know, managing family uh, and also uh, trying to, you know, continue a career in, uh, in, in the museum world. Uh, but what was interesting to me uh, originally, uh, I didn't start just caring for a child. Before that, uh, I looked after my grandparents for a couple of years. Uh, while uh, they were moving around, I did a lot of things for them around the house and it really changes your pace. So as a 25, 26 year old, I was running around the city doing all sorts of work, you know, jumping onto buses and auto auto rickshaws and tuk-tuks as some of you might know and uh, moving across the city with great pace and, and it was a big city in, in India. Uh, but when I came home, I had to like dial down that speed because when you're maneuvering yourself around people whose motor skills are not the same as uh, as able adults, you suddenly find that your pace changes quite a bit. But what was interesting to me through that journey was the censorship of my role as a carer. Uh, where I couldn't speak of this uh, within my uh, professional spaces. I was caring for them and many of my uh, my uh, colleagues too were in caring roles as mothers or caring for elders or other family members, but uh, you could not speak of it too openly. And that was something that was really like irking me a lot. And I think when I started Computational Mama as an Instagram, like secret Instagram account to just kind of post some of my work, uh, it was very simple. It was just like these little algorithmic uh, sketches that I was doing on the side in between, you know, diaper changes in between uh, trying to figure out feeds, uh, waiting, uh, you know, filling my tax returns and like really fed up with that. So, you know, like it was just like you, we were going through the motions and here I was getting a little bit of time to like try something out like for five minutes or 10 minutes a day. And it had no relation to anybody else in my life. And it was interesting to see that uh, very Pretty soon, uh, my partner Agat, he mentioned to me that it had almost become like a act of self-care uh, where, you know, when people will say, oh, go to the spa, you know, you're looking tired, you've been looking after your child the whole night and, you know, uh, it, 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 you need a break. But maybe that kind of break was not something I was used to or, you know, uh, perhaps interested in. And this was a kind of break that was really 
very very much more exciting to me to kind of build these images with a bit of code and and uh, a little bit of luck almost in most cases uh, it was around uh, early uh, early 2018 where i started uh, got an introduction to what we all know now as computer vision and i think the easiest way to understand computer vision without really going into it is to just think about it like the eye of the computer and i think uh, most of us here are coming in with like image making uh, background so it's not difficult to like think about it in that context so what is the computer looking at which also means that it has a brain so here we've been uh, we were uh, looking at some ideas uh, we were exploring for Agat uh, on the right in the white shirt uh, he is a theater maker and he was looking at what we could do with computer vision in uh, in uh, the theater pieces that he was trying out so uh, it was interesting to see this idea and then like move with this idea of what it means to uh, get that camera view and like manipulate it in some other interesting ways, whether it's uh, through AI or not. And this was a very different time when, you know, like it was not the AI that we know today, you know, even today there was some uh, some strange one about uh, chaos GPT, which is trying to take over the world or something like that with nuclear codes. So you know, this is sort of say, let's assume it to be like that uh, helpless little four year, you know, four month old baby that's still kind of not able to turn around on the bed. Uh, and it's kind of just like waving its hands around and trying to see what it's around, what's around. And really, for me, this journey with AI has been very easy to compare to the life of a child and to the development of, of, a, of a young child, uh, which I'm seeing uh, as, I, as I'm moving on. Uh, I'll just show you some pictures uh, of my family as well. Uh, this is my grandmother. I live with her. Uh, she's my mom's mom. Uh, I've also looked after my dad's mom. She passed at 98. And then my mom's father, who, who passed at 91. And she's now 89. So we have a slew of a slew of people from, uh, from a different generation, uh, you know, who who don't even know some of these words that we now, you know, talk about all the time. And this is my mother. She's 62. Uh, she's a designer also. And my son here, he is, he will, he's five and a half. So he goes to school now. And it's interesting to see like how, uh, how when you're moving and working at the pace of other people, because sometimes when you are in spaces of care, the focus obviously cannot be on yourself. So how do you make time and space for yourself when you're trying to think of work? How do you sort of allot that space to yourself? Uh, and, and where do you get those moments? And really, it's really about getting those moments because sometimes uh, this is what my workspace looks like. This is where I'm sitting right now. And this is my son who's taken all my coding with friend stickers and made his own collage. He's thrown his things around and I'm trying to fill Reich's Academy's uh, application. So, you know, how do you give yourself time to like concentrate and focus and try to bring those th thoughts out? Uh, and how do you how do you understand ideas of forgiveness and what what does completion mean in a space like this? Like. Uh, because uh, I think that there's this vision we have of artists that they have this sort of control space within which they live or within which they are able to do their work. Uh, maybe the artist is chaotic, but the chaos is still their own. It's it's not thrust on them, you know, like uh, like Spider-Man with his superpowers. So it's it's something really, uh, really that was bothering me to not be able to see myself in the spaces that I wanted to make. And um, never find that space where uh, my conversations around care could get attention or were uh, were even sort of legitimate or validated in any way. So uh, while I was doing this kind of code journey, uh, of course, COVID hit and uh, I was able to uh, teach uh, coding to a bunch of creators, uh, all women initially. And we started doing very like sort of basics of code and art uh, all on uh, first on on zoom and then eventually on on twitch uh, which is also very special for me today because uh, i'm on a twitch stream after almost maybe a year and a half almost two years uh, i've not been able to do that for a while and while i was uh, uh, doing these Twitch sessions, uh, it was obviously like the height of COVID. There were a lot of people coming in and going through the streams. But what was also very evident to me was this like silence because people cannot talk 
to you again like uh, you know it's just on the chat and there's always a lag you know you're figuring things out and uh, I don't have the privilege to be able to stream like for seven eight hours like other people are able to because you know work work life kid so many things come in the way uh, so uh, I really wanted to see what I could do if I called in friends so I just very blatantly named it coding with friends and i started inviting i think catherine is here today she was one of the first uh, guests on uh, coding with so, friends hi everyone. Um, hi. and uh, the idea was to take like just one hour think of a small project that we could do together uh, and and not to stress about completion not to stress about failing it's really like to ensure that you can see this image of two women coding because I think immediately like when we think of images of uh, people in in the technology sector we don't necessarily think of women and I think that idea of them like sweating together figuring things out you know debugging uh, laughing uh, failing was something that was very important for me to showcase and kind of uh, look at and Catherine of course is is a wonderful artist and creative coder so she was not failing as much as some of the other people I have invited on these streams uh, who were uh, who were like me uh, very uh, like simple novice beginners in terms of their understanding of code this is Pooja she's a typeface designer uh, so the idea was to see if I could teach them a little bit but also to see what we could do in that one hour uh, who you know what were our conversations were they going in directions of us having just generic conversations about life and thinking about it just like any other activity uh, that one would associate with this idea of like crafting like whether it's making origami together or maybe just like making dim sums together and like figuring things out so eventually it's not so much about that origami bird or it's not so much about that um, about that dim sum uh, and the taste of it but as so much more about doing it together as a, as a as a group of people and really that's what uh, what my practice has been about to to get together community around these ideas of technologies and understand its peripheries uh, what we are doing with it um so at this point i will try to see if i can just show you a couple of uh, projects that uh, I was trying with computer vision, uh, keeping in mind that it's a bit more AI, a little bit image, but not so much AI images. Uh, this is a small project that uh, I showcased at a creative coding gathering uh, where if five or, or like four people come together, it kind of detains you on the screen. And it was a play on on a on a on a library called posenet which is basically uh, like it looks at poses of bodies and and movement and it had this strange kind of limitation that uh, it would only take five poses and it at that time uh, there were lots of protests going on in delhi and there is a rule in india where if uh, during a protest the police can implement a, a, a special act where if more than five people gather they can arrest them because it, it could be like they're gathering together for you know some kind of a conspiracy so it was interesting to kind of play with that silly little uh you know default uh default of the library and see uh, what we could do with it uh and then uh as i i was progressing with all of this uh i was also like obviously my kid was always there hanging on top of me you know uh, here he is with me while I'm trying out uh, hand pose, which is also a library that looks at AI and uh, finger uh, coordinates. Uh, and it was interesting to see how he's been like looking at it, but it's also sometimes really difficult for me because, you know, I'm trying to do something, uh, but he, he really wants to play with it. Uh, and then where do you like build those boundaries and, and figure things out, you know? Uh, is it more important for me to just like let go and let him do what he wants to or is it important for me to like set those boundaries and say that okay you cannot enter my space while I'm doing this and at what points as a mother within your culture and within your communities do you have that say or not like that is something very uh, really like that's been playing on my mind as I'm meeting many of his, uh, many of his classmates mothers who are working in different spaces uh, living with different family members and in different kind of cultural uh, situations than uh, than we are and uh, so this is uh, where the sort of uh, computer vision stuff was going and it it sort of continues to work in that space and as an offshoot of coding with friends i also started to uh, uh, 
sorry padmanabhan is probably here but <laughs> he and I, he's been helping me produce a series of podcasts which haven't come out since like last summer but we were looking at the idea of like creative coders and care and it includes uh, it includes here uh, 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 mrs mrs babil who is uh, a 63 year old coder and she started only last year uh, so it's really like about being able to take uh, technology and like give it back into the hands of people who are interested and excited about it and not just be very sp specific or focused about you know the output and i think uh, that's something that uh, sort of capitalism forces on to code a lot and the idea is that how playful can you make coding how playful can you make technology enough for everybody to 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 kind of engage with it and then through that engagement get the right questions out uh, because the more people use it the more uh, more thought processes come out the less biases kind of keep embedding themselves within it uh, and i think the rest of the conversation is going to be a bit about bias uh, because we are talking about ai images uh, i will now try to remember where i should be in my flow of thoughts um yeah so yeah so the streams were going really well but at some point uh, uh it was just getting too much and this is like this one time when i had to stop streaming and like bang in like 20 minutes into the stream because my son got up in the middle and i had to go so i couldn't be like those streamers who were out there you know like putting putting in the hours and figuring stuff out and like you know being the best content creators that they could be i always have to work with this idea that the focus will never be on me until you know maybe some some more years perhaps so even today uh, you know i had to like my mother uh, came in and like she took took uh, took you again to to you know to bed because it was just like getting too much so this is my mom and him in the morning uh, so this is kind of like where i'm drawing things from i'm drawing my ideas and work from to to focus on this idea of how can i like not censor my ideas of care and like bring them back out into the open whether it's self care or originally how it started but now also just looking at care as a as a larger idea uh, so i'll just uh, show you maybe some images uh, oh yeah this is deepika she is also an artist and a mother um, but wait i have to focus <laughs> uh yeah so i will show you this piece that i uh, did uh, last uh, i don't know maybe november uh, it's about two ish minutes with a little soundtrack to it and then i will take you through the rest of hopefully it lets me stream it a, a little better quality now m mainly what you'll be seeing is uh, all of the ai work and uh, yeah so if you want to like plug in some questions please feel free can you hear the audio
sorry yeah uh, so this was this was at a very interesting time when ai start diffusion models were just kind of coming out and stable diffusion had just come out uh in the first like first few weeks maybe sep- early september uh, and uh, i was seeing all these really perfect images of these women and men even sometimes and it was really like bothering me that i couldn't see myself in any of those images uh to the point that okay because i knew how to use it i just decided that okay what does it mean for me to be part of these but really uh, the root of this comes from a very interesting book i was reading at the time which was uh, which is called baby on the fire escape maybe i'll uh, show it to you fire escape uh which is uh, this wonderful sort of uh, uh set of uh, biographies almost Uh, but about ma- uh, motherhood and creativity uh, written by julie phillips and uh, it features uh, from audrey lord to alice neel to doris lessing uh, all the sort of uh, sort of writers and artists from uh, from uh, maybe not this generation but maybe the one before uh, who kind of juggled all of these things and their sort of perspectives on it and it was really interesting and even the title baby on the fire escape is like this constant like being where you are present in the space but you are constantly thinking about the child wherever they are uh, you know and you're constantly worried about what they're up to what they're doing and it's like this uh, it's so ingrained within the sort of practice of motherhood that sometimes it's difficult to remove yourself from that and uh, these ideas of like looking at what it means to be an artist but also a mother like uh, i i re- return back to what i said in the beginning where you know of this artist in their like perfectly done up studio space or like however it might be but them being totally in control it's easy for us to imagine artists doing things like working on on their projects like day in day out but what happens if that person is also a carer to somebody else and uh, that is really something that was uh, that was coming coming to me and also through the book was really helping me sort of articulate articulate my understanding of it and um, it was also a very nice uh, podcast old one uh, by debbie millman called design matters which i don't know maybe now people don't like it so much but uh, i really enjoyed it and it had a really nice interview with amy sherald uh, who is a who's a painter very well known painter and i think uh, you maybe you guys know she uh, did the uh, portraits of uh, both the uh, both michelle and uh, barack obama uh, and what was interesting about her life is that she really started her career in her late 30s because till then she was Uh, herself sick for a bit and then uh, eventually also looking after some people within her family and also then this notion of care was really coming back to me that like where do you make the space for yourself if you have to make space for someone else and uh, and i think uh, for me this her work has really been uh, interesting to kind of follow and look at her trajectory and it really gave me an idea that okay it's not always about the work but also about where the person is coming from and like what is it that we can share and not share again like this idea of censorship of care uh, what is what's possible and what's not so now i've become very sort of very open i my son is in in the meetings that i attend uh, he's all over the place he's always the focus of things to be done so if today he would wake up right now i am happy to leave the zoom meeting and this and this stream because i know that that has to be my focus for the for the moment uh, and and then within that space how do you how do you keep creating how do you keep pushing yourself to do more and like look at those larger ideas of motherhood and all that's around it so i'll just show you a few more videos they don't have audio but they were just helping me to see does the ai really understand all of these things like uh, is it able to uh, imagine with me what it means to be a mother what it means to give birth uh, what what it means to be on an operating table getting a c section uh, and when it imagines these things can it imagine it in a brown space can it imagine it in a space that's not uh, sort of in 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 this kind of pristine whiteness can it imagine home births uh, what does it imagine when you say uh, put these words into the prompts you know like uh, does it like change the gender does it does it change the body does it change the skin uh, what 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 happens in these in these ideas and 
I was just exploring what 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 it would give me if I were to say, okay, give me like a child being birthed. And it really tried <laughs> something strange. But what was interesting to see is that you can really quickly notice the bias like many of these images especially of the little children uh, are like you know those first newborn baby images so as as uh, makers of images it's it will be very easy for you to spot these things when you're looking at diffusion models because obviously there's a data set these images are real artist images uh, so it's it's interesting to see where this uh, where when you put in a prompt, when you put in this text, what it's giving you. And really, for me, this was just a, just the start of this idea to see where I could push it and how many mothers I can keep making and what are those representation of mothers that I want to keep trying to make. Uh, please let me know about time because I don't want to like go overboard. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so... Uh, just to kind of see its understanding and expression of of the body and at this point uh, it, it's interesting like I, I want to make this parallel and perhaps it would be nice for people to also if you're not coming in from a technology or an AI background to sort of think about is like first is machine learning then it's training and then this idea of like confidence these are three very commonly used phrases in uh, in like uh, like basic AI terminologies but for me, they they uh, map so well on on my child. You know, he's learning. I'm training him to do things, and 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 what is the confidence with which uh, my child is able to express or able to do something? Uh, you know, these are things that that I can bring back to when I'm teaching people about AI. So, uh, learning, of course, like you know, when you're looking at like okay, reinforced learning. I think that's such a simple term. Like oh, go put your shoes in the shelf. Remove your shoes and put them in the shoe shelf. Take off your shoes and put them in the shelf. When you go home, your shoes should go into the shoe shelf. And that's literally it. That's what we are doing to the AI too. You know, we are just telling it image of dog, image of dog, image of dog, image of dog, image of cat, image of cat. So, so really it's up to us to be able to view this entity that we are sort of calling AI or whatever and be able to like, uh, able to uh, give it this I mean, I mean, maybe it's it's not the right word to say. Well, not maybe not human, but maybe at least the softer, softer look and move with it and and try to see what we can do with it and and how we can push these ideas. And then it was really interesting to me because I had really not delved into the data set uh, too much. Uh, but what I learned is now uh, over the course of so many months is that the stable diffusion data set is five billion images. 5 billion is a lot, like it's it's bordering like population, etc. So 5 billion images is a lot. And then to me, I feel like if it's 5 billion images, then why can't I see myself in these images? Like not, maybe not myself, literally, but at least as a, as a mother in India, uh, you know, who's, who has a, who has an artistic and a professional practice. So it started with this very simple image, which is, basically my own of me sitting with all these toys and these like random child child like things around me but at the end of the day when I look at it I just feel like oh I'm sitting on top of a garbage pile because it's so much sometimes it's like you know people are tripping on it uh, you know we don't know what's where what's mixed with what but what happened is when I was prompting it from saying sitting in a room full of toys to sitting in a uh, sitting on top of a garbage pile the the race of the mother changed immediately. Uh, so from being this, uh, being this kind of white mother in this sort of neat and not so distressed look on her face, she turned into a mother of a Asian or African uh, origin and had this very distressed, tired, exhausted look on her face. And in in my prompt, I said for both of them, I said tired mom, one tired mom sitting in the room, and another tired mom sitting on top of a garbage pile. So, so immediately it's like, if there are 5 billion images and, and as a human, I cannot go through all of them. How is it that I can push the periphery of this data set to, to learn what, what, it, what is inside of it? Uh, how, how can I start these questions around it uh, without, you know, reading, uh, reading scotactic parrots and LLM models and, uh, and all of those big papers that people are putting out there in, into the world uh, for all of us. Um, so these these are basically my small attempts at looking how I can understand the biases around all of this. So 
I just want to keep pushing it and pushing it. So like I said, okay, can I make a hundred moms, like a hundred tired moms sitting, sitting and uh, on their laptops trying to get through the work day. Uh, I think, and then when I would post pictures like this, it was very common for people to come to me and say, oh, you know, my mom looks like this at the end of the day, you know, she's so tired. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I said, soon maybe it could be you. So, so the that idea that uh, that even though these images didn't look perfect or like I don't know where they were from or how they got generated even with just a simple one or two sentence prompt, why is it that they were still kind of like allowing people to express to me uh, this transparency that I want to speak of uh, within their personal lives? And really for me, that is part of the practice to understand uh, the personal lives of people who are around me, how they are influenced or part of care models within their spaces how do they impart care to others uh, and uh, of course these are not fixed and and these aren't uh, these are like very like movable structures but it's interesting to see and understand uh, what people do for each other and how they care for each other and and that's really so important and so rooted within like just living uh, so at this bit i will also now let me see what else i wanted to show you uh, yeah, so this stuff is done. Uh, right. So I will just show you now a little bit of uh, the workflows that I keep trying. Uh, besides stable diffusion, I use Midjourney quite a bit because it gives uh, sort of these like very interesting kind of images. I'll talk about this series a bit more, but I just want you to see some of these images as we are moving through. Uh, so again, uh, for me, the practice is to kind of continually find uh, that space of 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 myself as a mother within AI. So like whether it's these ideas of birthing, okay, this is sort of some other work, uh, or it's like this sort of chaos that within which I, I live almost, uh, or like to see myself in this kind of very like I'm going to say this word and people are going to cringe but it is for me like a multi-species entanglement where I feel like I have so many arms and so many so many you know bodies that I have to keep moving through even in a single day even in a single hour sometimes you know where I have to like play lego at the same time answering a client or like uh, perhaps taking my workflow outside of discord on the computer but just doing it on the phone uh, to to be able to give myself that forgiveness that okay maybe these images aren't going to be so good because I also need to like drop my son to his like whatever class that he needs to be dropped to so so really that's where this uh, journey started uh, in with with the AI images that are kind of like almost macabre in some sense and and where it was uh, interesting to see was originally uh, I was looking at um two things were really like in my mind one was this this very strong image from the film prometheus where uh, nomi rapace is inside that birthing pod and she like slashes open her uterus and like she's trying to take that alien out uh, which was to me exactly like my birth like my birthing delivery story you know like i'm inside the space and there's this bright light and you know they're just like cutting me open and then of course I couldn't see see the operation but my husband tells me that they removed all of my innards and they just like put all of it on top of my chest so I and like like you know for me that I couldn't even see that image so like for me I've been trying to build that image in my mind uh, and to build it with AI as much as I can and then of course to look at this idea of of sitting on top of the garbage or like just being doing like multiple things like cooking and coding you know eating and working uh you know like trying to finish 10 things while the while the child is uh, asleep or away uh, like this is a bit more of that kind of operation theater kind of scene and then just to see yourself as this creature who has to do so many things and no more as a as a woman but more like you know this kind of shape-shifting monster almost um and uh, and just kind of play with that idea and see where where I could take it. Okay, sorry, some of these are not. Uh, so so and then it was interesting to see what was coming in. Like I was getting these really strange images of uh, people in these like 
plastic pods i don't know why but uh, but what is also really interesting if you see in this image uh, uh, is that instead of doctors you see these men who are like almost dressed like um, priests indian priests like hindu priests uh so for me this is really like surprising that does that mean that the data set of india indian images in these models only have uh, you know uh, right wing images <laughs> i really don't know where this is going uh, but uh, it was interesting to me and this has happened to me more than once where the instead of a doctor it has been a hindu priest who's come into the uh, to the image making uh and then i started building more on this idea of these people within like a hospital like setting uh, with these uh, emerging evolving body parts almost as if uh, it were uh, like a lost archive like an archive of lost mothers and i started to build it into this story where like maybe there were these moms and and we don't know where they are they were like hidden by society and because this ai stuff has become so like advanced in so few months i was even able to like build it almost as if like a documentary crew has found this old hospital uh, in the middle of you know some kind of tropical space in india and uh, and then they went in and they found all these instruments and and this archive and then uh, all of these images emerged and this work for me the stories have really come out of my own space currently where uh aside from uh, my family members we have uh uh people who are looking after my my grandmother so we have some staff who are from a sort of peri urban area uh with very very different uh, uh different uh, spaces where they have to deal with caste and patriarchy in very different ways than we do and my mother also works in reproductive health so i get to know all these stories from her which are very interesting in terms of like people giving birth to having given birth to so many people that like by the fifth child when she went to take a wee in a in a squatting toilet the child came out you know or like uh, the uterus coming out almost every other person having endometriosis or or adenomyosis uh, all related to their stories of birthing and and subsequently uh, ill health malnutrition all of that so to me this was interesting uh, to like kind of Uh, take all of these things that that are happening around me that are not just my stories but also stories of other mothers around me and other carers around me because obviously this is a carer of of my grandmother also so it was interesting to see if i could acknowledge it in some ways that i really didn't perhaps earlier have the language to to try and ex- explore also and each of these stories uh, are sort of built on that idea where like kotra is a small town uh, not a town a village near where i live and what would happen if you were on your fifth pregnancy and looking after your in-laws and you know a ton of guests are coming in every day you have to go to the farm as well then naturally your body would want to evolve into having more arms than than what is uh, what you have but as is the case with uh, with uh, spaces uh, of such like uh, such uh, strong like patriarchal notions obviously she was rejected as soon as this evolution happened you know even though it was for the benefit of the family so i was just playing with these ideas and what it would mean uh, uh, to build it almost like a real story and again uh, there have been people who may not be so sort of involved in the ai image making spaces who thought that they were kind of real or at least not if not real staged uh, and i because i did museum work and photography uh, as part of larger sets i understand how to build staged images uh, as well uh, so these even the one behind me the background is that uh, it's like coming from that same series of images um so what i wanted to really do is uh, how different uh, is googling an image i i will answer that uh so what i wanted to do now is i have a link which i will just find uh, or was it in the chat here no it's not here wait let me just pick it up I can I can share it for you in the chat if you want to. It's 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 okay. Trans complete transparency even if it is a group of uh it is my personal <laughs> Telegram group. Uh so I don't know how many of you are able to access this but I'm going to shift to my other computer to share screen. Uh this also is part of my practice. I have a very like old like very very old laptop which I use uh, because sometimes 
uh, Yugen wants to sit in the garden and and I cannot then sit on my desktop to do the work. So uh, I kind of use this one. Um, so I built this little like, I don't know what to call it, app or whatever, but uh, or just like a website. Uh, and I just wanted to add to this archive of lost mothers, uh, but maybe like now I'm running out of ideas. But I also have like, I strongly like always want to make sure that whatever technology stuff I'm doing or trying or learning that I'm able to sort of bring it back to other people and not kind of, I know this new word that's been going around on Instagram, gatekeep it. So, <laughs> so you know, to, to be able to like allow people to play with this. Uh, so I've got this on a local server. So maybe it's a bit slower for you guys on the link. Uh, and uh, uh, so I'll just say uh, with say tentacles, which is like my favorite kind of mother. Uh, and uh, is uh, there is a bunch of mid-century medical equipment in the background. Uh, and then I'll just say make and hopefully it will give me a new image so right now it's really like it's a very rough prototype idea uh, hopefully i'll have a space where all the images that people build can kind of sit and and really be an archive and uh kind of build on this macabre nature of uh, ai not being able to give you like perfect hands and limbs and whatever else that people are talking about on the internet but to build it into this archive of <laughs> mothers. Uh, so this is uh, where it's at. And right now there is no way for you to save it, except if you just go and like save it yourself. So if you'd like to take some screenshots for screen walks and send those to us and specifically me, I'd be really, really happy to see uh, how people are thinking about uh, young mothers and, and, and their bodies and where they are within, within uh, say like these hospital spaces. Uh, so that is what I wanted to uh, try now. Uh, we, we do have a bit of time, so maybe we can uh, stop sharing the screen. And yeah, let's know. let's encourage also the audience to to check the and to to yeah, use yeah, the cool. the site uh, to create to generate some images. <clears throat> and also to share the, the screenshots or, or the images themselves uh, on the chat if, if they want to. Um, that, was, that would be super cool. <laughs> great. Meanwhile, we also want to encourage if there's someone who doesn't want to play with, with the tool but still has some questions sure, sure, to, yes. to add them into the chat. Uh, so we can also bring, in, bring them to Ambika. Um, ah. And just in case, if you want to upload like a screenshot file, it's the icon below at the bottom of the chat um, that says file. Actually, let me try myself. There are some images already popping up on the on the chat. Oh, this one I can see. Should we also ask the audience to share the prompt? Yeah, sure. Because I have no way of saving those things yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll I'd, be able. To... I'd be happy to. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and. I will also share with you the secret of a, a good prompt if you're interested. <laughs> it's very simple. So right. yeah. How do you feel uh, about the this this promptism uh, mystery, you know, that has been kind of talked about, especially oh. at the beginning? This. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are two three things I feel about it, uh, and I'll, again, I'll speak speak of it through my own experience because. Uh, in the in my career in the museum, I spent much of my time doing project management, and which basically means prompting people. And then with everybody, you have to use a different language. You know, your carpenter needs to know a certain thing in a different way than the electrical engineer who's coming in versus the CEO of the project versus the, you know, uh, young intern who's at the project as well. So in the same way, like 
I really like to think of the AI as another collaborator whose language I need to understand to ensure that I can kind of move move into that space. Uh, of course, yeah, like there are a lot of people who don't share their prompts and all of that, but I really don't, I feel like that's really silly and like, why would you, why would you do that? Like, it's not your image. You're just like using a large model and making all of this. So uh, I'm in that way, I, I'm a bit uh, cognizant of all of the, all of the, media going around about um, the ethics of it and I think uh, especially with these images you can really see the ethics where you know you see these young people who are looking a bit sad emaciated uh, you know just because it says Indian mother uh, and uh, really uh, to to kind of see the data set you will realize that many of the images within the data set for India tend to be like either very picturesque, you know, tropical beaches, or they tend to be more like, you know, images of people uh, in spaces of, you know, where there's no privilege. So immediately that means that they are under nutrition. Immediately that means, you know, there is, it could be a staged picture of someone who's like, you know, those pictures of Africa, which everybody knows so much about. So, so uh, really for me, these, uh, every prompt is a reading of what's in the data set. And I think no one can read it better than someone who's working within spaces of images. Uh, so yeah, uh, tool and forest, very nice. Tool is not really there, but I guess forest was a good one and it gave you this kind of uh, semi-jaguar kind of thing happening. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, kind of somewhere in the middle, but I still feel like so much to be figured out before you can really claim these images to be your own. I don't know. Uh, I'm really like in that space. Uh, where, how do I how do I say that this is my image? Uh, in the same way that uh, the carpenter made the exhibition for me, uh, but I instructed the carpenter. So how do I say to the carpenter that this is my exhibition? You know, he's the he or she is the one who made it. So like I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing it out there in, in, in that very uh, like different kind of a space but uh, really I don't know if you had more questions to add to it I can answer them. I was thinking that maybe we can share some of the images that uh, the audience is, is uh, oh, yeah. posting on the chat. Yeah um, uh, let me would you like me to do that? If you want to sure. Uh, yeah yeah okay. Uh, it's interesting so. how even the more recent contemporary ones like Robocop is turned into a orientalist yeah. and archival image of the past uh, or exotic yeah. past. Yeah, <laughs> here, here they are. Oops. Ah, okay. Mm. And then, uh... Uh, some more yeah some more loading hello babies mm -hmm. do you have a favorite in the direction of the way you feel about being oh. <laughs> uh i don't know not really uh or maybe i don't know but definitely this uh catherine this book um uh, Maybe on a fire escape has like so many instances where I could immediately see myself, uh, you know, as as being in a similar space. Like it resonates with what like it's like a like how the book says it's like this convergence of motherhood and creativity. Like where are you in the middle of that map of all of the all of that? Um, uh, some more coming in? No, that was the last one. And so just maybe you can tell us a little, you build this in stable diffusion, right? Just maybe also yeah. technically. Oh yes, I will uh, give a shout out to the company uh, that's been, I've been working with <laughs> uh, part-time. I help them to do workshops and like uh, just kind of ease people being able to use AI. 
uh, and uh, they have a very simple tool to make uh, like compare different kind of image generators so i just pulled that api i'll i'll share this link i think it's really it's like much e much easier even than uh, mid journey to start your kind of explorations of uh, ai image making in this it has like a bunch of models and you can like go through the settings we have a couple of nice like videos around it uh, that i can share here oh that's interesting this one sam uh, let me check this out yeah so so the one i've built here with the tool is more like it's it has some things fixed so every time that's why every time the image is black and white uh, whereas of course you can do whatever you'd like to do with uh, with uh, this tool uh, i have uh, very consciously stopped using people specific styles because it it can be so contentious uh, and i'm sure that is a question for someone at least in uh, in within the group today but uh, rather to then uh, look at like larger ideas and movements so like say i want some kind of cinematic lighting or i want like to look a bit more 3d so then it it could be somebody's it couldn't be somebody's but uh, you know you you are sort of re relieving yourself as a as a creator from that burden of like blatantly picking someone else's style at least like currently that's the <laughs> maximum you can do uh, and it's like it's so sometimes i find it so upsetting to see you know all these technologists like uh, bashing these artists like you know they put in so many years of work and i don't feel like it's right for us to claim these images to be ours to the point where you know uh, we are you know like making some i don't know how many bitcoins on it or whatever but uh, yeah uh, okay there's another one it's, uh, working quite cool so that's interesting you, already have, you, know, a, like, you already have an idea of how you plan to develop uh, also this i know that you just made this tool uh, just for us uh, today which is great thanks so much <laughs> uh, but i was also wondering especially looking back at your twitch stream you know like this idea of also um these images being a social space in itself right? like uh, yeah. you know also this idea of coding with friends uh, this this spaces that yeah, uh, yeah. you know the result is not so important in the end it's more like also the social yes. relations that they create so it, i yes. think for photography for the image this is really also kind of a, a very big turning point right we're so used to yeah. look at the final image as the output yeah 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 i think that's that was actually really my focus and i think your the talk gave me this little deadline to push this idea out to the world uh you know in in context of like again i was i was in that same space like with coding with friends uh, before that where i was putting things out in the world but i really what i really wanted to do was help others to make it as well so like if this could be a tool for us to like talk about motherhood to to you know build and imagine these uh, these spaces of what it means to have a mother uh, in an ho in a hospital i would be interested to see where this project could go right like right now i think already a lot of people are trying it which is quite exciting for me uh you know to see what they are up to and and that's really that's really what we all are in in like in nowadays like you know we are all we are all curious inquisitive we all want to try things uh and we all also also want to talk about our, our lives and our worlds and sometimes that's what i keep saying that there's the censorship around that idea to to be personal to be transparent to feel like you can converse about things outside of work you know like this is my practice this is my work but that's it you know at home it doesn't matter if you know i'm i'm a father I, i'm a carer for some parent uh, why why that like why is it so uh, why is uh, why are fathers not questioned when they go out and people are like oh we didn't even know you were a father artist it's so common for you know someone to say they were they are a mother artist but how how common is it for for someone to say that they are a father artist and it's not like they are not dedicated fathers they all are so but why the censorship why this kind of distance from this very very important role in in your life like you know why why do that so so i i really like feel that's important and if this is a way for people to talk about it so be it that's really where i'm coming from you know very simple uh, very obvious that's it like no no 
no like beating around the bush <laughs> no, absolutely and i think at the same time um, even the images themselves somehow in the way that they circulate they already kind of you know open up a discussion to representation of of uh, motherhood that as you said yeah. are just uh, not yeah. almost allowed no i, I was reading i think uh, this term on a, on a newsletter the other day was the mom fluencer trap you know yes. <laughs> the representation <laughs> of of mother uh, that are like yeah. a very specific yeah. perfect and uh, in line with the attention economy of you know instagramable yeah. images perfection health uh, wealth and all of all of that absolutely yeah, yeah. 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 even the yeah. even the, the images that these models create that seem sort of like non-perfect and have their glitches and their uh not their, their, their noises and their problems with them uh help also to to sort of create a yeah. a wider sense maybe of of motherhood and also of other many social yeah, yeah. issues and roles yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah. The last one that uh, we just got in the chat from Sam is uh, by far my favorite so far. Let me let me load it then. Sam, could ah. you share please the prompt of that image? Sam has gone wild. <laughs> <laughs> we have lost him. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. I mean, yeah. this could be me and you can. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day <laughs> yeah 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 this is looking interesting so just yes, for the for the audience on twitch the the prompt included so from the from the uh template that uh Mika offers says an archival photograph of a target a young indian mother with jellyfish in the background there's a whale inside a mumbai hospital uh which the whale doesn't show up for some reason but the jellyfish is there twice Almost. Yeah. Okay, so of them, I'm gonna read a question from uh, the chat from our oh, Imogen Holworth. Um, Hi, computational mama. I wonder, do you feel that AI allows for the infinite expansion of a life and experience, motherhood and womanhood in this instance, that in reality has earthly limitations? A freedom perhaps from the various expectations, tropes, and stereotypes that can so often define and constrain the lived experience of mothers and women. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, to most extent, yes, because like I really want to be a mom with multiple arms, and that's really what I'm trying. And unfortunately, I can only do it with images. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it's interesting to see what's possible. There is another very uh, wonderful project someone has been doing on birthing speculations. Uh, yeah, they are based out of Netherlands. Uh, let me just try to let me let me look for it on Instagram and and, and send it to you. Wonder Mash. Yeah. So they're looking at birthing futures. Uh, and that's also really like super interesting to see different kinds of like uh, formats that uh, 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 they've taken it into uh, and the kind of styles that they are coming out with. So it's interesting. Like, I think there's a lot, lot that you can do. And I, and really for me, I think now it's also become interesting, uh, not in the mothering series, but in some other work that I've been trying to see uh how to kind of blur uh very like uh focused ideas of gender to see where you know the the body can look more fluid and you know not necessarily mask or feminine uh and uh, you know maybe turn this word motherhood into like a larger parenthood and try to like I don't know, like, I'm really tired of all of this kind of gender stuff <laughs> around being a mom. And I really like as soon as possible if for it to become like, you know, equitable, not if not equal, but at least equitable in every sense. Whoever is caring for the uh, for the child. So, uh, or, or anybody else for that matter. So, so yeah, like, I think it would be interesting to see uh, where, where it would go in, in that context. Um, yeah, I've been... So I've been really trying it in all directions, including like uh, looking at uh, what if you had like an office submerged uh, in the water because, you know, uh, the glaciers have melted, uh, you know, uh, what what do those things mean? So so like in a way, like my workshop's name is also it's like renegade approaches to AI. So like not trying to like go for this perfect kind of image, but like go for as many kind of interesting 
uh, appearances that that uh, you can build with this kind of image making. Is there anything else? Or no, I think these are the only ones that I have. Uh, that's interesting actually um, maybe you know there is this friction that also emerges from uh, you know the, you talked about the biases that are inside these images but at the same time there is this uh, freedom that you just mentioned about a, a speculative image that can be generated through this technology and also um you know this idea of uh, um creating or or challenging even notions of uh, gender representation of uh, gender it reminds me of Jake Elwes uh, who also did a screen work for us what was it, last year or two years ago um, you know this idea of taking deep fake technology but to create an identity that is fluid uh, in uh, um, their online uh, drag show where one can choose and uh, so I, I think yeah. what what also really interesting is moving this discussion somehow from this very uh, a bit boring, you know, like a crisis of the real, of truth of the image and kind of using this technology. Um, yeah. But maybe, I don't know, how do you see this this friction between, you know, like working with the biases of these, of these data sets and the systems and then trying to push them to generate uh, something that is actually, uh, you know, more real in a, in a sense, right? Or yeah. Like speculative. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like I've, I really like the way I started looking at the AI stuff is that once I got a hold of it, I was really looking at the data set. So I like actually there's a little search tool which you can use to go through all of them. Let me just pull that out also. Um, uh, so this is a this is a company that's been like doing all of the like data set, whatever. Uh, fixing I don't know what the what those words are they're not coming to me now but uh, they have a little like interface where you can check so like if I type here mother and then it will give me all the images uh, that it picks up as mother within the five billion images that it has I can just so 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 and then you can like and they have things like aesthetic weight to it so like how good looking is the image so sometimes when I say oh give me a picture in the style of Picasso you may get a picture of Picasso rather than getting a picture that looks like his style because uh, somebody has aesthetically graded his portrait higher his photograph portrait higher than his than his paintings so so that's kind of like uh, some interesting sort of looks of the bias also which are quite exciting uh, to see so and then if I were to write Indian mother it might just give me something totally different originally I was also finding uh, so many times that the Indian mother would turn out to uh, look like uh, like a 50 60 year old mom of a of an expat Indian living in America like they have this look these moms <laughs> sorry <laughs> no 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 like uh, you know uh, you know they have a like they have some kind of better clothing you know they have you know they look fresh because you know they have better lives uh, and uh, you know their their kids are earning in corporate money so now see like the Indian mothers are uh, are very like you can see that these are from sort of urban peri-urban areas uh, which are kind of staged many times uh, in many communities still it's not so easy to get permission to take pictures like this so one can already assume that who gave them permission or did they get it just because they were it's written in German so one can assume that this person is European so like these biases are immediately uh, evident to to anyone who's living within these spaces like so we see this commonly I live in a very touristy city so I know people come in and they'll be like, hey, can we take a picture of you? Like, of course, not of us, but like people who look sort of exotic in that way. So many of the images that we've seen today from uh, others as well, you may see a certain look that's coming out, which has this uh, kind of, you know, almost like this uh, look in it. Um, yeah. Many times mothers look older. They don't look young uh, in in the way that this one does. Uh, and it's still very common to see moms in, you know, like 19 year old mothers uh, in, in even where I live, which is fairly urban. So, uh, so what, what does that mean uh, in that context? Uh, I don't know if that was relevant. I, sometimes I, I can really <laughs> go with an idea in a different direction. Uh, oh, this is a nice one of the cats. Cats are no, good. 
it was also really interesting to, to go through the data set, I guess, to, to have a better sense of how the, the model has been has been trained. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. particularly looking into the, the images that also like the people keep some sharing on the on the chat and uh, generate them through through the tool that uh, that yeah. you share I'm with happy us. I'm, I'm so happy that people are liking it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, for me, that's more exciting than just like talking about the work that people are able to make something with me, you know, you know like that idea of, uh, again, like doing it together. Uh, I really enjoy that a lot. So, so that's nice to see that. So this is, yeah, so this is kind of the current data set uh, that is, that's being used. I bet this going to like from 5 billion, it will go to, I don't know, 60 billion. I have no idea, but that's the thing that, uh, then why can't I see myself in them is really the question that I keep going back to, you know, why is it so? Yes, thanks. And I was like very scared about the lack of slides. <laughs> so. um, wonderful. And I think you did uh, wonderfully without slides. So <laughs> not, not to worry. <laughs> so, um, oh, so wait, there's just like a. Oh, wait, this is another question. Um, I think that if we do not have any burning last minute question um, for Ambika Computational Mama, then it's a good time perhaps to wrap up now. So I'd like to thank you so much um, for um, sharing so much uh, of your practice and also creating this tool and engaging um, with these uh, topics with us and, and leading us through this very complicated but also very exciting uh, world of synthetic images. Um, May, one last question. What do you see for the future? Some some futurology. What's what's going to happen? I mean, oh. this all happened like last year. Where, where is it going to go? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Now I'm so like I'm already tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Don't tired you want to of something keeping... that you will regret when you, we're gonna look at the video recording. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's it's so difficult to say. But I'm just, I'm just kind of like interested to see uh, what what other people, especially you know, like uh, non-technology people, like how they end up using AI because I've always found that those images turn out to be so much nicer and more exciting than then some sorry to say but some tech bro type person does because you know they are like aiming for a really really interesting vision it's not just about testing the technology out uh and and that's really where i'd be interested to see what's happening people like co-creating with it taking it back to analog that would be so so cool to see like what's gonna happen in that world and i'm <laughs> like what we're also trying now is to see how like a uh, younger generation of creators like gen z are going to use it because like for them this stuff is so like part of their general like life rather mm -hmm. than you know maybe us or like a generation above to see what they end up doing with it because that's really like a testament to how people can really work with new tools and, and I think we are old already. <laughs> <laughs> Great thank you uh, so much. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Amika, for, for, for the skin work. Also, thank you to everyone who has who has joined and also shared, created the images and, and shared them with us in the in the chat. I think it's been a, a wonderful skin work. Um, we will be back in two weeks. Uh, so please join us in two weeks on, I think it's the 26th of April. Uh, yes, um, with the Chaotic Interface Design Lab. Um, who's going to do a participatory um, activity on a crazy Miro board. So please come back and play with us some more with some uh, more crazy network digital. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so thanks. Thanks a lot.